Welcome back to the Crochet Karate Souls my friends over at YarnSpirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the Buffalo Plaid Hat for him. I'm gonna tell you how to change the size just in case you want to. So we're gonna be focusing on Red Heart Heat Wave today. This is a heat generating yarn. So when it's out in the light, it doesn't have to be direct sunlight but it can be cloudy day. It will activate the fibers inside this and warm it up to 12 degrees warmer. That's 12 degrees Fahrenheit or 6.6 degrees Celsius. So it's a really neat kind of yarn in order to uh, work with this and you're going to need three colors and just one ball of each. So you can see that the colors here. So it kind of reminds me of I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I wear high heels and it's okay. That's what it reminds me of today. Plaid is exceptionally in. It's also called gingham and there's also another photo on the back here. So what you need to decide is your colors and I'm gonna go with more of a blue kind of uh, grayish theme. So I'm gonna um, take a look. So you will notice that the main color here in the brim is also used throughout the whole thing. So that's gonna be your constant color and then you're gonna need something a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go with a, a lighter blue here and then I wanted something more in the darker blues family. So I got this one here. So you'll find this in different uh, retailers also on yarnspirations.com if you'd like to play with this yarn. So it's a five and a five point five millimeter sorry five and <laughs> five point zero so five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play. If you want to change the size let's talk about that because I know somebody's gonna at least email me once on this. So if you'd like to change the size in this, I don't have exact chains and you're like oh <laughs> I've just listened to this video. Here's the thing. If you want to chain in sets of six, the repeat of this here is done in sets of six. So if you want it smaller, if you eliminate just six stitches out when you're going to do this brim, you will make it smaller and smaller. So what I would do if I were you and you were me, I would if you have a child that's nearby or maybe even for yourself, you would just chain in sets of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six and then just kind of try it on. Remember it will shrink a bit when you go to uh, apply this. So you want to uh, just try it around your forehead. See if it's gonna fit. If it's too tight around your forehead obviously you need to add another six and if it's way too loose then you may have to do that. You will notice in the first two rounds whether it's gonna be too big or too small and that's how you would change the size. So just, just keep it in sets of six. So as we begin to do the brim we're gonna be using color A. In my case it'll be gray. That's my constant and what I'm gonna be doing is chain 72 and then we'll do these instructions. So one and two and it says repeat the second round five more times. So I just put number one, two, three, four, five and as I pass it I will check it off as I go and then we'll do one single crochet uh, then around and then we'll begin working on the chart which will be then the, the plot pattern that you see. So let's begin the first section. So as we begin we're gonna create a slip knot. Remember that the heat generation of this yarn does not wash out. This is part of the fibers itself and it's also tested for safety reasons and it's completely safe for your skin. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna chain 72. So if you need to change the size and you'd like to chain in sets of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If you wanna just do the pattern as is just chain 72. So one, two, three, four, five and six. And what I would do at this point is that I would just drop the loop and go into the first one here and put it on and then just continue along. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and then just keep on going and if you do this then you will have a, a loop that won't be uh, twisted for you. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this. So either chain 72 or your custom size. So now that I have my 72 on here, I still have the first one on here and you'll see. And what I'm going to do then is just yarn over, pull through and through and then that'll conclude that round. So what we want to do is that we wanna begin round number one and chaining two does not begin as a half double crochet. So it's not a stitch. So what we need to do is that we need to make sure that there's 72 stitches going around. So just chain two does not count as the first stitch and in the same one that you have here in the back loop only for a nice clean joint uh, look. Just go in the back loop only and just half double crochet. And just now that you've done the first back loop, the next back loop will be upside down. So you'll see it and just continue to half double crochet then all the way around. So just make sure that you are just half double crocheting in each and make sure there is 72 before moving on. So my last stitch is just about to go in. Now I always have an issue with uh, the very first always looking like it's wrong. So the fact is there's no more stitches left and so what I would do if I was wearing this because I'm going to is that I would do a two together half double crochet and when you do that I, I'm still gonna end up with 72 because it's my last one but what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna wrap and I'm going to just go where the first one, uh, chain two started and just pull through 
and then pull through all five loops. And what that's doing is it's pulling everything close together and then you can slip stitch then to the beginning half double crochet. And it's a way of filling in a gap space so that it looks more closed. Just like that. And so when you get weaving all your ends it's gonna look pretty good. So let's begin then round number two which will be repeated five times after we do it one time. So let's begin round number two. So remember that the chain two is right underneath it so you just don't wanna, you wanna ignore that one. So you're just gonna chain one and then just going in around the next one, that front post half, it's a front post half so go in through the side to the other side, pull through and then pull through all three loops. This is making a rib stitch that's really tight. Just ignore that chain two though. So then you're gonna do a back post and then wrap the hook and coming to the back side and out through the side of the post and back out to the back side and then pull through and then pull through all three loops. The next one is a front loop so our front post so just wrap it and going into the next one side to side pull through pull through all three. Next one from the back. So you're just gonna repeat that going all the way around so it's, it's front back front back front back all the way to the very end and I'll see you at the end of this one this is round number two. When you get all the way back around the last one will be a back post half double crochet and you're just going to join it to the top of the first front post half double crochet. So then you're going to continue then and do the last round five more times. If you were customizing I would do one more round and then try it on the recipient that or yourself if to make sure you'll notice that this will have elasticity pro uh, properties to it because of the, the ribbing. So this is exactly what we're looking for. To start uh, the next round for the next five rounds just chain one and just match. So you got a uh, half double crochet in the front post so just keep it as a front post half double crochet and then next one you can see it's in behind and you'll keep that as a back post half double crochet. So you're just matching exactly what you see for the next five rounds and this will keep the ribbing effect in play that you can see on the model. So let's continue now and let's move along and I will see you at the end of completing five more rounds of this. So this round plus four more times and I will see you at the end of that and then we'll continue to move ourselves up into the hat. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, so now we're back and I have my rounds complete. You will notice that there's a slight seam line here. That's normal. So um, usually when they take photography that that's at the back of the head. So that's something that you can keep in mind. So now the next round is that we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do one single crochet uh, in each and then we're going to join it and then what we're going to do then after that is then revisit the pattern then for the plaid or the gingham or the <laughs> or the buffalo pad that we have and then we're going to then start that action. Um, you will notice that when I'm, um, I might as well share with you now. So you're gonna notice that there's no decreasing. So what's gonna happen is that you're going to grow it up and it'll be a repeat of four times and then you just have to bunch it at the top and then you can throw on a pom pom if you wish or just keep the pom pom off. You can decide you have enough yarn to make a pom pom if you wish. So let's continue then around. It's just one single crochet in each of the stitches going around and then we'll start the fun stuff next. So I'm just coming up all the way back around and I am just coming into my last one. This was where the back post was and then I'm just going to slip stitch then to the beginning single crochet. So now that we're going to begin the fun stuff let's go to the diagram next and let's look at that. So before we zoom in on this I want to point out a couple things here. So what we have here is that the main color here is the dark and you will see that it's dark here. You're going to notice that this is kind of spiraling up that happens naturally because that we're working in a continuous revolution. So if you were to turn your work and go back the other direction then you would have lines go straight up but then it wouldn't probably look like this because it's relying on all the back part of the work to be consistent in order to get this look. So you'll have to keep that in mind. As we begin then the first round is that we are going to start the maintaining of the pattern. So each one of these boxes equals a single crochet so let's zoom in on that first. So as we begin to look at this is that each one of the three boxes here equals the color. So you have the light color and, and the dark. So in our case this is gray and this is gray. So you can see that the gray is used in every one of the rounds going. So every fourth round we're gonna switch the positioning of this color and move it over. And it's just a matter of just accessing it uh, from an earlier point of view and we'll get there and I'll show you. So this color here and this color only exist in these three rounds. So this right here is where this color is and this one. So if you look at it from carefully you'll see that the black here is only in this section here 
and then it disappears. You don't see it here and then the light color is only in this but it does not appear here. So the only consistent color then here is the gray that we're gonna be able to find. So once you get established you can see it uh, a lot more clear and so what I'm gonna do is unslip st stitch the first part of what I just did and then I'm going to introduce that color and then I'll show you how to switch your colors back and forth. This is called Tapestry Crochet. So as I said the gray is the constant color. So the gray is gonna exist in every one of the rounds and so it's gonna be the other colors here that switch out. So where, where I did the slip stitch when I joined it to finish off I want to just undo that one and I wanna slip stitch it using this lighter blue. So let this gray just fall in behind. We'll access it later and what I need you to do is just leave a longer strand here and just loop it to finish that. So slip stitch it with the color that you want to be the next color to use. Now what I would do is put these these colors in behind. So leave the straggler behind. We're gonna attach that later and then the gray we're gonna carry up underneath the stitches. So let's get you closer here and let's show you how to do this. So we're going to begin and it's the first part of this revolution. So you wanna chain one using that blue and leaving the gray underneath leave the straggler for the blue in behind and we'll attach that later. So starting in the very first one you want a single crochet going right up over top or uh, underneath that blue so that the gray is on top of the line and you're just gonna single crochet. So you're gonna do once, twice and the third time you're gonna go in but you're not gonna finish it. You need that gray to be available to you for the next stitch. So you're gonna drop the blue and just pick up the gray and use the gray to finish it. Once you switch just tug on your yarns make sure that they're nice and tight. Look behind once in a while so that you can check it and now the next three are gonna be gray. So just going into one go right up over top of this blue. Two and three and the third one we're gonna switch back to the blue. So what I would do if I were you and you were me the blue is behind me and the gray is to the side. So when I have that they don't get tangled. So remember when I go to switch over now it's blue. Leave the straggler. Make sure you look behind. Make sure that there's no yarns that are loose and now the next three are blue. So one, two and three with the switch. Drop the blue. Pick up the gray and switch and now the next three are gray. So I want you to do that all the way around and then I'll see you at the end of this round and then we'll recap again and we will continue on in this tutorial. So I'm coming back around and the final should be the gray color in order to keep the consistency and that's why it was in sets of six. Before you slip stitch then to the um, last one or to the first one you just gotta make sure you switch the color first and then slip stitch then to the blue so it's ready to go. Okay, so now we're just going to continue then up another layer. So just move the gray up and just chain one and, and just match the color. So the blues are with the blues keeping the grays on top and as you switch them back over just let the blue fall and the grays stay gray. So you want three rounds of this complete. So this is the second round of three. It's really not that hard actually once you get into the swing it gets pretty quick and it's pretty awesome. So continue this all the way around then and we'll continue one more round of this uh, color and then we'll switch off our colors once again. So I'm just coming all the way back around. I'm just switching back to blue as I'm about to join with the slip stitch and we slip it with the blue and then we continue up. So again letting the gray just fall underneath just for the final round. So this is around the park one more time James with this particular color and then we're gonna be switching it off in the next one to just changing the position where the gray is and switch or introducing the darker blue. So one more time around the park and I'll see you here in just a moment. So I'm just coming up around the third round. So what I want to do is that I want to just finish off the final round with the gray. So I'm going to slip stitch with the gray because if you notice is that the gray is gonna switch over and be on top of this now and where this color is here there's going to be a different color blue. So here and behind I wanna get rid of this blue. Leave an extra long tail. We'll secure that in with the tapestry needle later. So what I'm going to do then is introduce the secondary blue now and I'm gonna put it so it's gonna have a long tail in and will be underneath the first set of stitches so it's ready then for the next round. So let's begin to do our color switch. So leave an extra long tail and you're going to start the first color here 
as being gray. So chaining up one and on top of the blue will now be gray. So just, so but before I do that what I want to do is that I wanna take this color blue and just lay it down so it's underneath and we're gonna use that as a, to secure it in later. So it's ready for when you need to use it for the first time and it will keep the consistency of the stitch thickness too. So of course it's gonna be a little fumbly at first. Just make sure that you try your best and leave an extra long tail so you can throw that into a tapestry needle. So now in the first one here you're gonna do gray. So one and just follow it along two and three. And remember don't uh, don't keep it so drop it and get the blue. So pick up the blue, lay it down the gray and now the blue. So one, two and three and switch it back and then gray for three. So you know what to do at this point. You're just switching the, the location of where the uh, gray is and so you need three rounds of this and then you're gonna switch back and you're gonna do three rounds of the blue. So all together, so this uh, section and this next section is considered one of four. So then you wanna repeat that a number of times. So you wanna repeat these blockings a total of four times. So if you look at the sheet, this is one and then do it again and again and again. So that's uh, four times all together and then once you have that done then you're just gonna bunch it at the top of the hat. So I think that I can just leave you now and you know how to switch, uh, do your slip stitching when you get all the way around and we're gonna continue this journey then and I'll see you at the top of this hat. So on the last one here just switch it back to blue and uh, again keep that yarn ball, um, the secondary one behind you. It, it's just easier to be able to access the yarn and it's a lot quicker too. So you'll see this uh, working out before your very eyes and I think you'll be quite happy with it. So um, continue this and I'll see you at the top of this hat. So can uh, make sure that you repeat your set number of times, four times. When I last left you I was down here so I've done my four repeats and you can see in the light one, two, three, four. If you think it was too tall you can actually just take out a section if you wanted to even if it's just one little section instead of a uh, whole set that's up to you. I tried it on uh, just be at the three to see if I can get away with it to see if I can speed up my process here but um, it turns out I do need them all. So you can see that it does go up on a slant. That's not you, that's the that's the project doing that. So the first thing that we need to do is just we need to fasten off on the top here. So the first thing you should do probably is that I would get rid of all your tail ends. So at this time I haven't done so. So you're just gonna have to work one piece by one piece. Now I had you loop it so that you didn't have any knots in your project. If you do knots uh, right on the start of something like this it does, can it can work its way through. So just sticking with the back side here just drag it through the same color. Okay, don't go all the way through the project. You just wanna catch some fibers on the inside of this hat. So go once, twice, of course, <laughs> and then three times is a char uh, charm. So I wanna do that with all the loose ends. It's gonna take you a little bit of time but it, it shouldn't be too bad. So then what I want to do at this point then is that I wanna work my way all the way through those. Let me just get my scissors down here. I have mono strings so I don't take them away because I took away the real scissors. <laughs> so these ones never leave the studio here. So I would just wanna cut rid of the, and get rid of those. The next thing I want to do once I get rid of that I wanna finish off the top here. So how to finish off the top is that we are going to take the last color that we used and we're going to just drag it through these stitch work. So you can jump a little bit if you want to and you're just gonna put it onto a tapestry needle just like I just showed and you wanna kind of clothesline it in the sense that you're just gonna pick up the edges and then you're gonna pull it shut. So just working your way along the edge. I'd probably go every other one if it were me and just go and like a whip stitch just across. And I would probably um, just strategically I would uh, for uh, to prevent this entangling I'd pull all the way through before jumping and picking up a next section. Once you get all the way around which I need to do yet and once I get all the way around I'm just gonna tug on it and it will compress it. So let me get all the way around first. Okay while I'm working on this behind the scenes a tip that I can have if you didn't cut this str uh, strand long enough you can start tugging now and it will compress it so that it gives you more string to be able to attach to. 
So that's something that you can do. So if you cut it too short, no big deal. It's always the solution, right? So let me continue around. Okay, I've come all the way around and now I wanna strategically just start pulling it closer and closer so that you can start bunching in the top. Just wanna Okay, once you believe that you've pulled it enough, what I want you to do with that strand is that I want you to go across the project. So go across the top, make sure that everything is looking the way that you want it to. So there's gonna be a slight hole in there because there's a lot of bunching. So just go straight ahead uh, across and grab onto some fibers. Make sure that you're grabbing onto some fibers that make sense. And then straight back across. So what we're doing is that we're closing in the top of the hole. Once you go back in, then just go in and just go on a diagonal towards the other side. So essentially you're just working your way and closing this in all directions. And then back in and again closing. So this thing has a, um, a pom pom on the top. What I'm gonna do for you is that I do have one done but I'm going to refer you to another tutorial which I will attach to this video so that you will see it at the end of this video. And it's using a pom pom maker. You can also use your hands as indicated in the pattern if you want to as well. So once you're happy with this and it's all closed in, then what you wanna do is that you wanna drop the needle into the center. Now I have not taken in my loose ends yet so you see those you'll see those there that I gotta take care of yet and you wanna pull it through. So pull it all the way till it can't pull anymore and then what we wanna do is make the tie on this side. So when you do the tie, go around some fibers on the inside of this hat, don't go through the project and you wanna tie it shut. So with the pom-pom that we're going to do is that there's tips to be able to make pom-poms. Um, sometimes in a craft show if you ever make pom-poms, some people love the hat but hate the pom-pom, uh, vice versa. So what you can do is that you can make a pom-pom that's removable. Also people sweat so they like to sometimes wash their hats. So you wanna be conscientious that maybe you should make a pom-pom that's removable. So there's no difference in how you make the pom-pom, it's how you attach it. So if you wanna attach it with a, um, a bow tie shut, then it's always removable. So once you have it secured in, you can just safely cut it. Again, I still have to go through my loose ends. Then what you can do is that you can go to the end of this tutorial and there's how to make a pom-pom. So you're gonna use the three colors that you did and you're gonna wrap it. So this is what we've used. When I say we, we, I mean me. This is what I used and I filled it up so it was completely all the way full. I don't remember the brand of this, you probably do. Um, but this is what I have in my collection because I don't have the packaging and that's what kind of matches the shape. If you close it, it's gonna be pretty close. So what you can do then is that if you wanna make it removable, then what you can do, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say what, can, what <laughs> you can do. So what you can do is that you can go through the, the top and grab one strand and pull through only and then another section across the hole or what you believe the hole is. You need to make sure that it will catch into some fibers in the sense that um, it's not the same hole and you're gonna just pull that through too. You're then gonna take it inside out again and just only grab those strands leading to that. Now it's probably easier if you just think about um, getting rid of all these strands first. But you know hindsight's always 20-20. So here's my strands and so there is the pom-pom. So this particular strand if you do into a bow tie and what I could probably do at this time is that I'm just gonna tie it in a bow tie just that's a regular size and then I'm gonna cut the extra strand that's not needed. So if anybody wants to buy one of these or you wanna give it away or they wanna wash it, all they can just do is undo the bow tie and then they can remove the pom-pom and have it washed. Okay, so you just gotta weave in the rest of your ends and therefore you end up with a hat that looks like this and it's kinda neat and it's quite awesome 
and this would be how you would make a buffalo plaid hat. So this is a cool idea and hopefully that you've enjoyed today's tutorial and until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new hat. Bye bye. So let's begin to show you. So just put the two sides, okay, the outside hinge is gonna be toward the outside and the other one is to on the other side. Okay, match it up. Use the divots to hold just like you see here and just kind of pin it together. So you're going to do it in a way that is going to just hold it together as you do it. Okay, so it's just gonna be good and uh, they don't need to match each other up there. It's just as long as you're pinching here and it holds it and it just, it's just lightly holding it. Once you start wrapping it, it'll stick together without you having to hold it uh, really quite tightly. So it's just a matter of starting this and getting it wrapped around a few times. So I'm gonna use my left hand to wrap and all I wanna do is fill in the space on this whole half side. So I'm not gonna jump over to the other side as of yet and I just want to continue to wrap. So I'm gonna go right up to this edge and I'm gonna go right up to this edge. Now you can either count it out if you want to if you would like to be really super super accurate uh, with your counting so that it's equal on both sides of this tool or what you can just do is just wrap it and make it look like it works. Okay, so because this is variegated I'm kinda just jumping around a little bit and what I wanna do is I wanna continue to wrap now and as you get more and more it just sticks together on its own. So once you're satisfied with it, now you can just cut your yarn. So now I'm gonna jump to the other side and pinning those two other two together. I'm gonna do the same thing and just start it and wrap again like I did the other side. So continue to wrap this side and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, once you're satisfied with it, all you just gotta do is trim this other yarn. So what you wanna do now at this point is that you want to close this contraption. So just close it and also open up these clips and they are locking on to its neighbor but not uh, opposite to each other. So just close it, so just lock it and lock the other side. So now the entire ring is now uh, full and now we're going to then separate these and being able to make the pom-pom. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to grab our scissors next. So with the space that is existing in between just like you see here we're gonna run our scissors through and we're just gonna start on one side and work our way to the other side. So just going right directly in half, okay, and we are just gonna gently cut. Okay, just do a few at a time if your scissors can't handle it and you do not wanna let this ring go. Everything is being held into place as you're, you're doing it. Now the size of your pom-pom is varied on the size of this ring but also how many times you wrap it as well. And you go right to the end. So you wanna physically see this gap as you go. So now you're gonna go back to the other side. Do not let this fall apart on you. Again, holding everything together and you're gonna do the other side now. There's nothing holding these rings together so you kinda wanna hold on to it at that point. So right now I'm about to hold, which I already am, and I go right to the end. So now the rings are actually completely separated from each other but then it's still in the inside. So just gently put it down and I need you to grab enough strand. Now if this material is not strong enough to be tied then you gotta use a different material in order to do the tie in the middle. So what I'd recommend for you is that grabbing the same amount of yarn you're gonna wanna tie about two, three or four or five times in the middle in order to really get it to, to separate or to get it to really be tight. So just grabbing your yarn and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a, an extra um, strand of string as I'm being able to tie it to my project. So just slipping in between the two gaps, the gap spaces as you see here and you can turn it around and just bring it to the other side. Again being gentle about it and just bring it through. And do you see the hinging here? There is a space so the yarn will go in between that too. And you just wanna pull it through. And so just you start to tie your little knot here. So just let's do that. So let's just put that through and really give it a good tug. And this is going on the inside of this. Pull it enough so that it's gonna form it but don't pull it enough that it's gonna ruin it. 
So then I'm gonna go to the other side now, turn it over and I'm gonna tie this side. So see how I just tied the other side now I'm gonna come to this side and tie this side and I wanna do that a few times. So I'm gonna use these two strands that are falling out as my tie strands to go to the project. So I wanna keep those and I don't wanna damage these strings. So when I go to work with this I'll leave them out. So I'm gonna tie one more time and then we're gonna release this pom pom from the tool. Okay, so there's my strand. So now I'm just gonna hold it by those two strands. So now I can open up the tool by just releasing this, these clamps on both sides. So they're on both sides of the work here. And all I can do is to open it up now and it will release the pom pom. So there's one out. And here's the other one coming out in a second. And there is my pom pom. So now holding it by the two strings so you don't accidentally cut it. Now you just fluff it up. Okay, look how perfect that is. It looks nice and full. And you're just gonna take your scissors then and just any ones that are just abnormally long or just didn't sit right or just kinda looks like it's not working well. Then you're just gonna safely just trim it like this in order to form the pom pom like so. And give it a good shake and look at it and that's how you would create a pom pom with that. So take this other than string strands that are here and you can attach it to the top of a hat really quite easily and that's how you use all these kind of little tools. So the size of the tool uh, then gives you the size of the pom pom. So if you look at it from this point of view, see this pom pom? It kind of matches that. So if you're looking for a bigger pom pom, you can use a bigger tool like so, you'll have much bigger and if you want smaller then you just use a smaller like so. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as thecrochetcrowd.com. Enjoy and hopefully you enjoy your new pom pom. We'll see you again real soon.